Good afternoon and welcome everybody to another episode of the Abona Tennis Online Coaching Podcast. This is your coach, J.Y. Obona, and this is where I try to help junior tennis players and their parents navigate the high-performance junior tennis journey. There's many different ways to enjoy tennis, but we're here because our players have high goals for tennis, and that's the way we enjoy this game. We enjoy reaching for tough, difficult goals, and that's where I have the most fun coaching, and that's why we're here at this podcast, to try to learn on what we can do to help accomplish those goals and for parents to help navigate that journey. And this week, we're going to be talking specifically to parents, but players, you can remind your parents of this, all right? I want to talk about how a parent should handle a time in between second and third sets, whether it's a tie break or a full third set. Most families are stuck in a position where when their child splits sets and they come off the court to receive coaching, no coach is there. And if you know me well, you know that this infuriates me. For me, I think a coach should be there as often as possible, whether it's the same coach or another coach in that academy. Unfortunately, that's not the situation for most. And hey, thank you for giving me an opportunity to do this podcast and write a blog with it. So when the coach is not there, the parent is left as a de facto coach. Are they though? So what should a parent do in that situation? Because they're not a coach. But yet here they are. They're with their child. The child's going into a nerve-wracking third set. They've been taking care of this child their entire life, so their job is to help this child try to be happy and achieve a great life. So why wouldn't they provide guidance if nobody else is there? So most parents are going to put on their best coaching hat. They're going to provide the best coaching advice they can think of in that moment and say whatever they think is coming to mind that their child should be doing better, such so as play more aggressive, attack the backhand, your serve, this, that. Some even say to push the ball and get a million balls in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we know some of you do that. You know, and they'll say a lot of great and well-intentioned things like that. Now, my suggestion to parents is to hold off on any type of coaching. You're not a coach. If you were so good at analyzing tennis matches, you'd quit your day job and go coach because you'd be turning players into champions. It's hard enough for us coaches. So for you, who was not a former player or or a current coach, you can only imagine, all right? And also, coaching isn't parenting. It's not just about what to say. It's about how to say it and definitely what not to say as well. Whenever I'm getting ready to coach a player in between sets, I'm thinking about what tone of voice should I use? Do I need to be more supportive, motivational? Do I need to be calm? Do I need to be tough on them because they have a bad attitude? Or maybe they have a bad attitude and I need to be soft with them and be nice with them and tell them everything's okay. You know, there's a lot that goes into even just something that is a 30 second spiel about what to do going into this tie break. It's not as simple as just, hey, hit to the back hit. It might seem to you that that's what it is, but it's not always that simple. So here's a list of things you can do to help in that situation. First, have the player call the coach. Most of the players I work with call me in between second and third sets. The parents send me a text when it gets late in the second set to, hey, get ready. And since that's my job, I tell them, hey, if I'm not there that weekend, Give me a call if anything comes up, and I stand by on my phone until that player calls me. Now, the obvious thing here is, well, I'm not watching the match. How do I know what's going on? Well, I don't know for certain, right? And I'm going to remind the player of this and let them know that, hey, look, I'm not here to give you strategic or technical advice about what's going to happen. But I will listen to them, and I'm going to just let them either vent or talk things out and ask questions. If they ask a question that I know I can answer because I know that player, I know what they do well, and I know what they're working on, then I can provide some answers. Or a lot of times I can lead them in a place where they answer it for themselves, such as like, well, hey, you won the first set. What did you do then? Hey, what did you do in the second set that you lost it? What do you think? And then even if they're wrong, if they can leave that conversation with some sort of confidence about what to do next, then my job is done. And sorry, parents, but they're going to get more confidence from that than if you were to coach them, all right, because they know that you're not the coach. So you might tell them, but they don't really deep down believe you. So that's a tough part with that. Like, at least 
I know the players well. And as much as every player is different, players within themselves are very consistent with how they lose matches. They don't lose matches 55 different ways. It's usually one or two ways. And if just by hearing them talk, I can have a pretty good idea of what they might be going through. And then I can say, hey, well, remember this, remember that, do this, do that. Also, if the player's upset because they just lost the second set, they're going to need to calm down. All right? They don't have a lot of time. They have two to three minutes or whatever. And so they need to use that time wisely to calm down. Since I'm not the parent, I'm emotionally detached. I can objectively listen to the player and not be bothered by whatever illogical or stupid thing they're saying. Because we know they can say a lot of illogical things when they're upset. All right. But for a parent to just sit there and be like, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. Calm down. Anything like that is just going to make it worse. Even if you're right, they don't want to hear it from you. And especially in that moment in time, in the potentially frustrated tone of voice that you might be saying. So I think it's better to have the player call the coach and get some advice from them. The second thing that they can do if they don't want to call the coach or the coach isn't accessible for any reason, they can have the player read a list of things that reminds them of what they're working on. Now, this is a helpful tool I give a lot of players, is especially when they're struggling to really focus in on the things that are most important to them because a lot of players struggle to, to remember everything. It's hard, especially when you're young. So we write down index cards before a match and we say, you know, these maybe they'll have three strategic things or three technical things, or they'll have two cards that have both. It depends on what they're working on. And these index cards are going to have to be written down by the player and are approved for by the coach and are going to include these important items. So a parent could just tell the player, hey, go over your index cards. That's going to recenter them. It's going to get them to focus on what's most important and what they're working on. If they're having a problem with their serve, then there should probably be a, an index card, you know, about their serve on, hey, this is what we're working on your serve, toss, left arm you know, anything like that. If it's forehand, contact point, spin, whatever, there should be an index card for that. So if you don't have a coach there and they're not accessible, write down index cards before the match so that they can look back at something. And that's a way to get some form of coaching. And again, it doesn't have to come back from the parent. Finally, I think the parent needs to say this in some form or another. But the words I would use as often as possible would be, to tell them that you're proud of them and love them no matter what the results. Even if they call the coach, even if they're reading the index cards, I think this needs to be said. Again, whatever word you want to use, but it needs to be clear and direct before they go on the court. It's important for the child to have reassurance that regardless of the outcome, their parents are proud of them and love them. Many kids feel like if they don't perform well and they don't win, or if they even have the slightest of emotional outbursts, their parents are going to punish them or they're going to be disappointed in them. Now, whether they have all the reason in the world to believe that or they're making it up in their own minds, yes, some, people, some kids just make up excuses so that they don't have to look inwards, whatever. It's not the point. Kids want to please their parents deep down inside. They want their love and support, even if they don't say it or ask for it. And if a parent truly wants to remove any kind of pressure their child might feel in the court, the words, hey, I'm proud of you. Great effort. I love what you're doing out there. No matter what happens, I don't care how you handle it. I'm proud of you for putting yourself out there. I love you no matter what. Something like that. Extremely important for the child. They if. You can tell them all day long and you'd be like, well, they, they should know that. They know, no, no, just say it, okay? They forget it. And in moments of stress and nerves, they need to know that they're there with someone that loves and supports them, win or lose, angry or happy, no matter what. Then, of course, your actions have to match your words, okay? If they do have an outburst and they do throw the racket or they do play terrible, whatever, yes, you can still parent them and tell them, hey, that's not the way to behave. Again, there's going to be a time and place for that, but you still have to, when they get off that court, you got to show them the love and support. You can't just say, oh, well, no, 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 no. If you're going to do that, well, then we have a problem. No, you can't do that. All right. I can't emphasize this one enough. That part, maintaining that strong relationship with your child, 
is one more important than any type of wins or losses they can have. But also number two, it's going to be the healthiest way for them to play tennis and grow and have fun and get better when they know that their parent doesn't care if they win or lose and all they care about is their effort. And then their actions match their words. That's the problem. See, a lot of parents, their actions don't match those words. So even when a parent says it, the child doesn't believe it. So that is way more important and going to give them a lot more freedom on the court to relax. Not entirely. We all know that you can't completely remove the stress, but we can remove a lot of it if they just know that at least the people that are watching, they, they don't care if I win or lose. They just, they love me no matter what, and they're proud of me. So I know it can be really hard to sit there and not coach your child when what you see might seem so obvious to you. Like, oh my God, if only they hit it to their backhand and they have such a bad backhand. But let me remind you, you're not a tennis coach. So how do you know you're not missing out on something more important? For example, hey, your routines in between points need to get better. You're rushing. You're not bouncing the ball before you serve. You're not using your breathing technique. Therefore, you cannot recognize how bad their backhand is. And that should be the obvious strategy. Because if you don't attack it, if you don't address that, it doesn't matter. They can't see. They don't even know that they're, they're a partner. They don't even know that their opponent is hitting a forehand or backhand. They're so blinded by their emotions and their nerves and the stress that it doesn't matter. So just remember, how do you know you're not missing out on something more important? You're not a tennis coach. And two, even if you're right, more often than not, your child doesn't want to hear it from you. You're not their coach. All right. Deep down inside, there's a part of them that's probably saying, well, you know, what do they know? Especially if they get older and into their teenage years. All right. All they really want from you is their love and support. They're not really coming out there saying, Please help me. Please help me. Literally as to being their coach. They're just, if they do say that stuff and, and I parents says, well, they, they came up and asked me, okay, don't tell them anything. All right. Guide them to a place where they can make the decisions on their own. Even if it's not the right decisions, it's their tennis. Okay. You do not want to get involved with how they play the strategy and all that, especially if you're wrong, they're going to blame you and it's going to make it so much worse for that car ride home and moving forward. Okay. Do not want to be the reason they lost. Okay. So even if they come up to you I, and ask, the best way you can help them is by leading them in these directions. Okay. Have them call the coach, have them write down and read index cards and just tell them, look, you can do it. I believe in you. You know more about tennis than I do. I love you. I'm proud of you. You'll be just fine. I hope this helps. Good luck out there.